Good evening, Victory Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for our Wednesday night service. Just to start you off, a couple updates. Um, first of all, thank you uh, for Sunday morning joining us on both our live stream and our, our video that we had posted. Uh, I do want to uh, just apologize for the evening service. We did have a little bit of technical difficulties there uh, with the uploading and, and some of those different things. And so uh, in order to uh, prohibit some of that and limit that, we're going to make some adjustments and uh, you shouldn't have to worry about that. And so you can look for those videos at the normal time. I do apologize for that and uh, hope that we can uh, uh, do a little bit better here in the future. OK, so uh, speaking to that, we are still going to do our drive in service for Easter morning. Uh, and we will still be broadcasting as normal on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. OK, so I just want to put that in your head so that you're with us and should you know when to look and, and, and when something will be coming out. I don't want to confuse anybody. I just want to be real simple. So Sunday mornings are what's going to be different. But Sunday night and Wednesdays uh, are going to be what are still online on the websites as we've been used to uh, for this little uh, coronavirus spell that, that we've been going through. So anyway, just to update you on that Easter morning. Uh, we are still going to do uh, our drive-in service. I know that there was some questions because of our original plans and how they got changed and some of those different things. Uh, but we will be doing our morning service in the, uh, in the parking lot like we did this past Sunday. And uh, one thing I would, I would say just uh, real quick uh, for, I guess, the quality of the service is, uh, first of all, make sure that, that you know uh, what is best for your car, uh, whether it needs to be uh, on uh, or started. Uh, or if it's going to need to be started multiple times or some of those different things just to kind of help you out. I know we had some uh, dead cars on Sunday. It's not because I went too long. You can't blame me for going too long. I tried to, uh, I tried to keep it very uh, appropriate and we still had some cars die. So, uh, so anyway, just to, uh, I'm making light of it, but just so you know, uh, just to, to keep your eye on that and to know what your vehicle is capable of and uh, so we can better do that. Okay, uh, that'll be a 1030 service on Easter as we had planned on already, 1030 in the parking lot. I ask that you be there just a couple minutes early uh, just to get parked. We will have some uh, attendants out in the parking lot kind of getting people squared away and parked. And uh, we will still be on uh, a radio station. And so we'll get that all out. And you guys will know about all that. Um, and then here's the, the thing that we're going to try to do for you. I know uh, we're Baptists and I know I promise food. OK, so I don't want to take that away. I want to stick to it. I know that there's going to be uh, a couple differences in what we were planning to do versus what we can do now uh, because of things going on. But we'll do uh, coffee and donuts. And so if you're somebody who's concerned and, and, and doesn't want germs entering the car or, or whatever it is, that's fine. You don't have to take the coffee or the donuts. Uh, I will say this, our uh, servers or whoever it is that's going to be taking that stuff out will have uh, gloves on and will be properly equipped uh, so that they're not passing that. Okay, we don't want to be uh, the source of, of any kind of germs going around, especially right now. Okay, so uh, again, that, that's completely up to you. Uh, nobody's going to get upset or offended if you don't want coffee and donuts. That's fine. Maybe uh, even bring your own coffee, right, so that you can enjoy it with us. But we will have some here at the church. Uh, just to give you a, a breakfast when there was food promised, okay? So I don't want any uh, Baptist uprising because we promised food and didn't have any, okay? So we'll have coffee and donuts. That's Sunday morning. And then our Sunday night service for Easter will again be online. I know that's different. I never thought in my entire life that I would say as a pastor that our Easter service would be online. I never thought it, but nevertheless, here we are. And uh, we're just doing the best with what we have, okay? So you can look for that uh, Facebook message. Uh, and also, you can look for it on YouTube. I would say this. Um, we are having great success in both categories as far as YouTube with the views. And also with Facebook, uh, Facebook, there's a lot of people connected. And so we, we realize that we need to try to upload those on Facebook as well. YouTube would probably be the primary location that you can look for those messages at first. OK, and then Facebook will be uploaded as well. A lot of times we'll provide a link on Facebook so that you can follow it to the YouTube page. So whichever way works for you best, uh, just make sure that you're looking for them at those service times and we'll get you where you need to go uh, to be able to watch those messages. And thank you so much for sharing it. Uh, I know. Uh, I get little alerts from Facebook and YouTube with how many people have viewed and, and different things like that. And, and I don't think all of those numbers are the most important thing in the world. But I sure do appreciate you helping us and reaching our world. And I think that that's one, that one way that we can do that right now is by sharing those links and passing those videos. And you never know who's going to be watching those. One thing that we've really tried to do on our Sunday morning messages and even our Sunday night messages is stop and address everybody 
at some sort of an altar call. I know that we're not at our altars, but we've tried to do that because we don't know who watches these videos and we don't know if somebody's lost and hasn't been saved and needs to be saved. We don't know who they are or where they are in life and we just wanna give them Jesus any way that we can. So thank you for helping us do that. I pray that you'll continue to do that in the future and pass those messages and those different things as far as you can. Uh, liking the video, subscribe, all that stuff, it, it all helps. So, so thank you for doing that. Last thing, last reminder, I would tell you this. Uh, make sure that you follow the correct Victory Baptist Church page. I know that uh, many of you still follow the older page, uh, and we we're trying to outsource that uh, because of just uh, uh, some difficulties that we ran into with posting and different things on that page. And so we do have our new page. It has the new logo and, and some of the different stuff that you're used to and familiar with here recently. Um, so you can follow that page. Many of you already have. Uh, also, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you do that, it makes it easier to get those notifications when those videos post, uh, and that way you're always up to date and you're not missing anything, okay? So, so just real simple things, just a couple announcements for you just to cover uh, here real quick. And so, uh, I, oh, I'm sorry, I think I do have one more question to address, just questions that I've heard here recently, and I've tried to address it every time I've thought about announcements and some of those different things. I know a lot of people have asked about the tithe and how to do that. That. I know that there's not many people who have uh, had a chance to get on the church's website yet, but if you go to vbcbatavia.org, that is our new website that's linked to our new Facebook page, which is linked to the YouTube channel, so they're all connected now. Uh, you can get on there, and there is a tab that says Online Giving for the tithe. If you're looking to give a tithe or an offering, anything like that, you can go on and, and, and do that online now, as well as if you live here near the church and, and want to just stop by, there's a white drop box in the front of the building, and you're able to drop it uh, right there in that drop box. And it's locked, it's secure, you don't have to worry about that, and we'll get you taken care of that way. Uh, you can also mail it, whatever works best for you. Okay, so that's just a, a quick question I wanted to address real quick before we jump into tonight's service, just to kind of answer some of those questions that you guys have, and I, I know I've heard in the last couple weeks. Thank you for keeping us updated, and thank you for hanging with us through this, and we'll, we'll try to honor the Lord the best that way that we know how, okay? So Matthew in chapter number six, if you've got your Bible, and I, I hope to, I know we've been addressing some of the different things that come along with this situation, but I hope to just tie it up, nip it, and, and, and after this, we'll move on from this whole coronavirus thing. We'll still be doing some online services, but, but what I mean is we'll shift gears and, and get back to you know, some of the things that, that we'd like to get to in studying. And, and so this is just the, if I, if I could give this one a title, man, it, it's really just the icing on the cake or the ribbon on the package, right? Just to seal it all up and to put this thing in God's hands. And we're going to move on and we're going to study some new great things and, uh, and we'll, we'll gear ourselves that way. So Matthew chapter 6, and, and you know these verses, I know, and you're familiar with them, but it is just so relevant to what we're going through right now. And we're going to go over them and, and just try to extract the truth out of God's word that he'd have for us tonight. And so look at verse number 25 in Matthew chapter 6. It says this, it says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Verse 26, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking a thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for your raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, uh, shall he uh, not much more clothe you, O ye little of faith? Therefore, take no thought, uh, uh, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith uh, shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have, uh, have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for itself. Uh, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And so just a, a couple verses to go over. And again, I just want to remind you, everything in the world can be scary. It doesn't even just have to pertain to this issue that we're going through right now. Anything can be scary. There, there's been pandemics before. There's been diseases. There's been uh, scares in the economy. There, there's been all kinds of things that have happened to our world. And you can get upset about any of them. You can prepare, you can get upset, you can pull your hair out, you can stress, you can have anxiety, you know, all these different things. But, but, but here's what we have got to remember as Christians. That's not for us. 
God has this thing in His hands. And I keep saying this thing because I, I want to bring it back to what we're going through. God has this whole issue already right. He already knows how it's going to end. He's already got this thing in his hands. And, and, and I want to move past that, okay? I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hearing about this virus. I really am. And, and I'm excited to get back to focusing on God and focusing on God's truth in the midst of the different things happening. I'm excited to move past this thing, put it behind us and, and get out in front of it and, and get past it and get back to what really matters. And so tonight we're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap up this virus. We're going to wrap up God having his hands all over it. We're going to move on. We're going to shift gears next week. And, and we'll be able to do that because of this passage that we're going to go through. So how can you leave this thing in the past? How can you move on? How can you in the future, when, when situations come, when trials come, when uh, you know something in your life comes, how can you deal with that? And how can you be okay uh, at night with, with sleeping and thinking and your thoughts running and all these different... How, how in the world can you navigate through all that and be okay? Well... Christian, friend, for you and me, a lot of it is faith. A lot of it is trust, okay? And it's not without warrant, okay? You can trust in some things. You can, you can put faith in some things, and there's no evidence to back those things up, right? It might be something that you really like. Maybe there's a new car company coming out that, that you really like the ideas that they have, and you say, man, I'm going to put a lot of faith, I'm going to put a lot of trust that they're going to deliver a great product, right? But there's no proof, there's no evidence, right, that there's going to be something there that's ever going to bring any fruit or fruition or, or anything along those lines. When it comes to God, we can put our full and total faith in Him and all of our trust because there is proof of His working and the different things that He's done in our lives. And so let's read through some of these verses and, and just stop and, and look at the Scripture and what God says. Again, realize God knew one day we'd be going through this. I believe that all Scripture, everything that God's recorded in His Word was written down for a reason, meaning that there's no text that doesn't pertain to you and me, that there's nothing in the Bible that we could read that God says, oh no, skip over that, that doesn't pertain to... Everything is meant for us. God knew this would happen, and God recorded this for a reason. And so therefore, I can deduct from that equation that you and I can benefit from the things that God has said here in Matthew chapter number 26. So look with me in verse 25. First of all, God's going to address something. He says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. And again, I want to stop there for just one second. You say, well, well God used men to write the Bible. I understand that, okay? But the Bible says all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. Okay, So I understand that God wrote it through men, but I also know that the inspiration of God is what provided the words that we have penned in, in our Bible. And so though it may be an author who penned it, uh, though it might have been written by a human hand through God's inspiration, I know that God is who intended these words to be here. And so if I say God said, or if I say and God recorded, understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that God literally himself, I know that there's an author writing this. I do understand that. But, but what I mean is that God recorded this here for us so that you and I would have it. So, so look with me. Verse 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, uh, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is the life more than meat? Is the body more than raiment? And we look at this verse and, and say, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Who in the world doesn't take thought for what they're going to eat, right? Uh, I know I'm a person. Right, and, and I know it, it, it's Wednesday evening, and I'm already thinking about. I've already had dinner. I'm already thinking about the next thing I'm going to eat. Right, because I'm a young man. I like to eat. Right, so so I'm always thinking about the food I'm going to, you know, partake in, and, and the different things. I, I'm thinking about what I'm going to drink, and, and all these different things. But but here's what the Bible's saying. The Bible's saying, don't worry about those things which are to come. One thing that you and I will do in our lives, because we're people, and because we have worry, and because we have all these different things that that make us people, our flesh we'll think on the future and we'll worry about the substance that we don't yet have. We'll worry about the things in the future that we're going to need, right, and, and, and where that's going to come from and, and, and how it's going to be provided and all these different things. When Here's what God says. He says, listen, don't worry about those things. He's going to give us some reasons here in a minute why we don't need to worry about those things. God says, don't worry about those things. You know, something very strange about me. You look at my life and as a, a young man and, and as a pastor now and uh, you, you'd say, well, you know, you, you probably set yourself up for success and you probably did some things beforehand. I tell you, no, I didn't. I didn't. When I was called to preach, 
I surrender my life, and, and here I am. I, there was no uh, college as a as a as a you know something I could fall back on. There was no uh, influx of money that I could put away and save in case this thing did. I, there, there's nothing like I have no backup plan, and I don't say that to, to to be foolish. I don't say that to to be arrogant or brag or to tempt anything. I, I'm not saying that to say any of this. But what I am saying is this: when God says go, or when God says do, or, or when God says I'm going to use you. You go and you do no matter what happens. And so we trust that God's going to provide. And I can tell you this from my life, God's provided. All the things I've had, God, God has done such amazing things in my life that I never even thought would be possible. In fact, I can't even go into all the things that, that God's done for me because it's so vast and, and so grand, all the different things. It's amazing what God will do in our lives if we'll allow Him to do it. And all we have to do is follow Him. That's what He says. He says, don't take thought for your tomorrow. Don't take thought for the things of the future. Worry about right now and, and allow me to work through you in the situations that you're going through. Verse number 26 says this, and He's going to give us again uh, a reason, right, for this belief. He says, behold the fowls of the air. So now God's switching subject. He's, he's going from us and He's going to the animals, right? He's going specifically the fowls of the air. We don't think about the fowls of the air, right? We don't usually think about birds. When we think of our life, it's all about us and, and our kids and maybe our family or whoever it is, right? We're, we're so concerned with us. There's this whole world operating and buzzing and, and, and life is moving and all these different things are happening around us without, us without our conscious really even being focused on them. Don't forget about them. Here's what God's saying. He's saying, listen, you have your life and all the things you're worried about. But there's all these different things going on around you. And he's going to focus in, in verse number 26, specifically on the fowls of the air. And he says this, uh, For they sow not. In other words, they're not preparing for tomorrow. Neither do they reap, right? They don't have a gathering time. And they don't store into barns, right? You don't see secret bird civilizations where they've got their birdhouses stocked up and they've got crops planted and they're, you know, reaping. and, and, and all. They don't do that. But they still eat, right? They, they're still here. We still see them flying. We still see them doing all these different things. And here's what God says in verse number 26. He says, uh, Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? And man, what, what a thought that God has recorded here for us. Man, the, the, the birds and the animals and all these different things that go out and, and still live, right? Even though we are, are negligent of what's going on on their behalf, they're still living, and the reason they're still living is because God is providing. And here's what the Bible says. Aren't you much better than the birds? Aren't you, doesn't God love you so much more than a bird? Doesn't He love you so, more, so much more intricately and, and intimately, right, than He would love an animal? And, and the answer is yes. I don't want to offend you if, if you're somebody who loves animals and uh, gives the puppy shelters or, or what. Listen, good on you. That's great. But I can tell you this. Animals are not equal with humans, okay? God made humans. God loves humans. We can get all caught up in, 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 in supporting these different things and these animals. That's great. If you're giving out of your abundance, that's great. Don't forget to give your tithe to God because that belongs to Him. There's so many people that will give to all these different things and they won't give God what's His, right? And I'm not saying that because I'm a pastor of a church. Don't get that confused. I'm saying that as somebody who's just recently became, I gave my tithe before then. I knew and I understood that was God's. That's a part of my life that God owns that I don't mess with. That's God's money. And while it's good to give to all those different things and, and, and you, can, you can designate your money all of these different places that you want to, don't forget God and, and what is His, right? And then I would challenge you this, if you're given to the puppies and, and all these different animals in and, and, and Africa, and all, listen, are you given to people? Are, are you taking care of the people around you? Because it's not just the puppies that are in shelters and, and all these, there, there's people in, in different parts of the country that don't have housing, there's people that don't have food, there's, listen, I, that's not what this message is about. That's just a little sub point, something that I stop on because I saw it, and, and I hope I don't offend you, but what I am saying is this, God made people. Life is about people. And while animals are companions and animals help us in many different ways, God is so much more in love with you than He is an animal. And so here's what He says. He says, if, if even the birds eat and the birds have provisions and all these different things, isn't God going to take care of you? Can you really stop in, in your life and say, God has not taken care of can, can you? Really do, can you really stop and say, no, God has not provided for me? The answer will always be no. I know that there are people out there in, in bad situations, and I, I understand that, but, but I also know that God allows us to go through things that we go through because He's trying to make us into something else. 
So God is providing, whether you see it, whether you don't see it, whether you're blinded to it, your eyes are closed, God is providing, and he's going to do it for you even more abundantly than he does it for the millions of animals that exist on earth today. Look at verse number 27. It says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature, right? You, you think about the worries of, of uh, uh, or I'm sorry, take, uh, taking thought of, you know, what worrying does for us. You know, worrying comes naturally, but what does it do for you? The Bible says, which one of you, just by thinking, can add one cubit to his height, right? And you can worry about how tall you are. You can worry about being too short or too tall or, or whatever it is, but you can't change it. Right, And no matter how hard I think, this little tiny pathetic excuse of a beard that I have will not grow. I can think on it, I can focus on it, I can try, I can will it, I can squint, I can squeeze, but, but it's not going to pop out of my chin any faster than I want it to. Right? I don't have control over my body the way that I wish I had control over my body. So God says don't worry about it. You can't add height, you can't add uh, you know, anything to you. So, so, so allow God to provide and allow him to be enough in those different, don't worry about that stuff. God's already got those things. He's already taken care of. And God's designed you and made you the exact way that he wants you to be. You are who you are because God wants to use you in a situation he can't use me in, right? Or he can't use somebody else in. You're designed specifically to do what God has, has, has made your life to be. And nobody can fit that role beside you. So be happy with who you are. Verse number 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the, of the field, how they grow and they toil not, and, and neither do they spin. And, and he talks about Solomon and all of his glory. And, and I don't know if you remember Solomon from the, the Old Testament, but Solomon was very wise. Remember, God said, uh, what can I do for you, Solomon? And Solomon said, give me wisdom so I can better judge your people. And God honored that and gave him wisdom, uh, amazing wisdom, right, that, that really no other person would have besides Jesus, who would walk on the earth so many years later, will ever have, right? And so Solomon had, had great glory. Not only did he have that, but because he chose wisely and asked God for wisdom, God gave him riches beyond the wildest dreams. And so all those different things that Solomon could have asked for were added to him. And so God says, even in Solomon's glory, with all the different things that he had, he wasn't even as beautiful, or he didn't even have close to the glory that, that each individual one of these little lilies that God has so intricately designed has. So why do you try? Why do, you, why do we try to make ourselves beautiful? Why do we try to live our lives in a way that brings glory to us and, and all these you know, different things that you and I will waste our life and our time and our effort on doing? And now I'm not saying that, that I don't use a little bit of product in my do because my hair puffs up like a cotton ball, right? If I get out of the shower and I don't do anything to my hair, it puffs up and, and it looks like a, a baby chicken, right? When all of its hair is sticking out. I, I do put a little bit of stuff in my hair. And do I, do, do I try to take care of myself? Yes, I don't, I don't want to wear, you know, dirty clothes and, and look nasty and all this. That's not what I'm saying. But, but what I'm saying is this, don't strive only right, to be this, this fancy and, 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 and colorful and all these. God says, listen, your glory, your skin, what's on you is not what you glory in. That's not what's important. These lilies that God has designed are so amazing and intricate. God says, you can't even, you, you can't touch it. So, so stop trying. Don't worry about that stuff. God, God is already taking care of that. Don't worry about that stuff. Go verse number 29. I'm sorry, 30. It says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, all ye little of faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? For all these things the Gentiles seek. Again, the Gentiles being the people of the world, right? Not the people that are given to God. They seek after those things. That's the only thing that they have to chase. Imagine this. Imagine having a mindset that was not founded on Jesus. Now listen, follow me. Imagine having nothing to fall back on. Imagine your strength and, and the things that you were physically capable of doing being the limits and the parameters for your life. God says the Gentiles do seek those things. The Gentiles do worry about what they're going to eat. They do worry about what they're going to drink. They do worry about what they're clothed with because that's all they know how to do. But you're a different people. You're different because you're not a Gentile anymore, you're a child of God. And so God says, because you've been bought and because you've been redeemed and because you've been saved, now you're totally different than what you were before. And so don't walk as other Gentiles walk, right? Be different and, and trust and know that God is doing something. God has you even when you're not thinking about Him. 
In verse number 32, it says this, For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all things. <laughs> there's not an issue, there's not a need, there's not a want in your life that God doesn't already know about. I know that surprises you, uh, you know, because there's things that come up in our life that, that we don't know about, but God already knows all of it. In fact, when you pray and, and ask God, uh, you know, I remember when Grayson was in the hospital and Amanda and I were seeking the Lord daily, fasting and doing all these different things, praying that, that God would do something with our little baby boy, right? And we were praying and praying and praying. That wasn't the first time God had heard it. <laughs> when we prayed and, and when we were going through that, God already knew. God already knew what was going on. God, God knew the situation better than the doctors did. God knew what was going on better than anybody on planet Earth knew. And here we were stressing and freaking out, and, 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 and we had trust in God, don't get me wrong, but, but you know, we worried as people. God already knew what was going on. He already knew what was happening. He says, don't, don't, don't worry, and, and don't, don't worry about all these different things that you'll need in life, because God already knows every need that you have. Hey, friend, take comfort in this. God already knows the needs of your tomorrow. You don't, but He does. You know what you need now, but God knows what you need tomorrow. And maybe God's doing things in your life not to prepare you for today, but to get you ready for tomorrow. And we've got to think about those things. God already knows our needs. And so you and I simply need to trust. Look in verse number 33, and this is what I would encourage you and me to do. Again, this is the ribbon on the present, and we're done. Look at verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. All that worry, all those things that you can think about, all those things you can dedicate your life to. He says, don't take thought on those things. Then he drops this big, giant word. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Don't worry about all that stuff, but seek God first. And you and I in our life, it's not our job to worry. It's not our job to prepare. It's not our job to make concrete bunkers stored up for years. And Listen. It's our job to trust God. Hey, listen to this. It's our job to seek God first. And I don't know about you, but in the middle of this and in the middle of everything going on, I, I don't want to worry about the world. I, I don't want to worry about myself. I don't want to. I don't want to worry about all those different things. I want to seek God. Do you know why? Because God has already got those things ironed out. God already knows our needs. God already knows all the things that are going to happen in the world. So seek ye first the kingdom of God. And notice how it says first, not last, not second, first. In his righteousness, in verse number 33, and all these things shall be added unto you. I said moments ago that God has provided so much for me in my life. Do you know why that is? Do you know why? It, do, you, do you know why and what I take rest in? Because I know I'm serving him. Why has God blessed me? Why has God allowed things to, to happen in my life that, that you don't see? You'd look at some of the blessings in my life and say, well, that's unheard of. I know, because I'm serving God, because I'm serving Him, and, and He is able to, to do so exceedingly abundantly above what you and I can expect. God is good beyond our imagination. And so God takes care of us because we're seeking His kingdom first. And friends, you'll never go wrong by seeking God's kingdom first. You'll never go wrong seeking God. You'll never go wrong dedicating your life to Him, but you will go wrong if you spend your whole life worrying, if you spend your whole life chasing the things of the world and not focusing on what God has for you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then he says, and all these things that you need, all these things that you worry about, God's going to take care of those things. Just keep serving Him. Allow Him to do that. Watch this, because you're right where He wants you to be. And just one more verse. And then he says this, he, he reiterates everything he just said. Take therefore, therefore is a, a word uh, in which indicates everything that came before. He says, therefore, because of all the things I've just said, because of all the things I've just taught you, because of all the things that were recorded before this, therefore, you ready? In verse number 34, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about now. Don't worry about the past. You're something different. Right? Don't worry about today. God's already got that. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about the things to come. God already has those planned out. God already has that. He knows your needs to come, and He's already taken care of those things. And so as a Christian, we've got it easy. <laughs> we really do. We've got it easy. We've got it easy. All we have to do is trust. 
there's no action required on our part. There's nothing that you and I need to do to get through this uh, in order to better prepare. It, listen, we just need to trust. And God will do the things that God does, whether or not, right, that the world freaks out, stresses out, and worries. So listen, friend, let's seek the kingdom of God. Let, let's just worry about his things. We'll keep moving. We'll keep pushing. We'll keep plowing through this thing, and we'll see God's kingdom grow because of our trust in him. So the challenge is this. The challenge is simple. Stop worrying and seek ye first the kingdom of God. And if we'll all do that, friend, uh, these won't be scary and troublous times we remember back on. These will be times that we look back on and say, man, isn't God good? Isn't God good for bringing me through all those different things? What a wonderful testimony. Let's pray, can we? Lord, we love you. Lord, we pray that you'd be with us through this time. I know that there's so many people out there that are so worried. Lord, this, this virus and the things that we've been going through has, has made national headlines and it has become the center of everybody's life, Lord, for this past month. In fact, you can't even wake up a day of life without hearing about it, seeing it, being warned about it. You, uh, you fill in the blank. But Lord, that's not how you'd have us. Lord, you want us to be informed of the things going on in the world, no doubt, but, but you also don't want us to spend and dwell and stress. You want us to trust in you. And God, more than that, more than the trust and, and, and more than just relying on you, you want us to seek your kingdom first. And so God, in my life, help me seek you first. God, I pray that you'd be the first thing I think about when I wake up and the last thing I think about when I go to sleep. God, I pray that you'd be the only thing, God, that I am solely focused on pleasing, Lord, and, and bringing glory to. God, I pray that you'd always have the forefront and the, and the uttermost parts of my mind, Lord, and I pray that you'd always be the most relevant thing to me, relevant thing to me. So, Lord, we love you, and we need you. And God, Christians need to trust you more. I need to trust you more in my life. And thank, and for, I pray that you forgive me for, for those moments when I've doubted you. I pray that you forgive me for those moments I've worried. Thank you for taking care of me, even though I doubt it. And God, now for our country, we pray for them. We pray for these people that are lost. We pray for those that don't have you as a foundation. All they can do is worry. God, we pray somehow, some way that these messages would make it to them. And they can know, Lord, they can, they can rest because they can have a relationship with you. And Lord, I pray if there's anybody that's not saved, that's watching, I pray that they'd be saved. I pray that there, if there's anybody that uh, some of my fellow Christians are around in their lives today, and they're not saved, I pray that they get saved, Lord, and I pray that they would trust you because of the Christian that you put in their life. And so, Lord, I pray that you do great and mighty things through our lives. I pray that you'd show this world who you are, and God, use our lives to do it. I want to be your vessel, and I want you to be shown through me. And God, if there's nothing else I achieve in this life, I want to be a servant of you. Help me to do that. We love you tonight, Lord Jesus. Be with us, please. Guide us, direct us, help us to accomplish your will. In Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.